What's up, YouTube? Eugene here. Hope you're all well. I'm going to continue with Christian Dior, the theme for the month of February. I'm going to share with you a couple of perfumes that I wore for the week and some more thoughts, which are just kind of re reoccurring and confirming what I've always thought about Christian Dior and Francois de Maché and the route they've kind of headed which isn't a very good one, <laughs> needless to say. I think a lot of you guys know that, but I've been screaming for years about uh, the legitimacy of Francois de Maché, of what's happening at Christian Dior's and, and that sort of thing. But, uh, uh, you know, a lot more things are just starting to come into focus for me. I wasn't really sure at the time what was happening. I remember when... Le Col Noir and Feb Delicious and Savage were all kind of released within a similar time frame. And I was like, what, 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 what is happening here? I was like really confused, like just very mass appealing, safe, almost, you know, Savage is generic. So, and it was just very off road for a brand such as Christian Dior, who've created a lot of you know, bold perfumes with their older La Collection Prive. And it's made, almost had me doubt, like, le, the legitimacy of, of Francois de Maché and, and the things that he's creating today and, and, you know, the reasons. What are the reasons for this? There's obviously a reason. Um, you know, the Collection Prive, they were very bold. I wouldn't say they were the greatest, they, they weren't the most beautiful perfumes ever put together, but they were bold, you know. Some of them had their rough edges to them. Um, I think he is one of the lesser talented from all the major designer brands, but at least he was creative in those, in those releases. Um, all designer exclusives are known for something, for some kind of theme. Take... Guerlain's art and materials line and it's you know it's all about vanilla if you take their elixir charnels it's all very themed towards uh, feminine sweet fragrances if you take their masculine Parisian line it's a theme of old classic masculine notes if you take let's say um, you know the Hermescence line it's all very um, they're all very watercolory, transparent, uh, a theme. There's a theme that runs throughout. If you take, I don't know, let's take uh, Guerlain again, the Absolute Starian collection, the Middle Eastern theme. You know, there's definitely a theme, a reoccurring theme that goes through every single perfume. And, uh, you know, they're bold, they're, they're rigid, they're, they're spicy, they're animalic, they're very oody and smoky. You know, I, as they all smell, I was going to say, they all smell different, but there's a similarity that runs throughout. There's a, a, an occurring theme. Take um, the Chanel Les Exclusives, you know, it's all about the Les Exclusives is a theme of Iris. There's Iris running throughout every single one, so there's that theme. And now I'm looking at these these Maison Christian Dior's, and I'm really confused as they lack a lot of focus. There's there's no reoccurring theme except for the theme of being very boring and generic, and you know, fresh, citrusy, floral. But still, that's not really a theme to me. It's more of a jumbled, mumbled, you know, a, a mix of whatever. There's there's no consistency to them. And it almost brings up points of here's a perfumer given a, 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 a canvas and he doesn't really know what to do with them because I find these are more about, the Maison Christian Dior are more about what they aren't than what they are because there's a lot of blank and empty space in these perfumes where the perfumer hasn't taken... Um, advantage of the full ability that he has to create something creative or unique or you know something different it's no different than a painter given a white canvas and told you know draw draw a house with a tree in it 
and that's literally all he draws a house and a tree and you're left with all this white empty space so instead of um, going a step further and, and and giving the mind something more to think about maybe drawing you know green rolling hills uh, uh, a fence that's maybe falling apart in the background or a I don't know some some dark clouds with rain or lightning or thunder or some animals in the back you know just just to give you some kind of I don't know um, something else to think about except for this boring house and tree or even when you watch a, a movie an action movie you know there's always themes within this theme there could be let's say a love story in the action movie there could be uh, I don't know there could be another theme within this to make it more interesting and give you more more things to think about but I don't find that's what's in these Maison Christian Dior's they've literally give, been given a theme and that's what he's done like let's take uh, Balad Sauvage for example a fig focused perfume which I think is very pretty it's very well done but after you know the fig and the salty the the salty sea breeze and the dry air there's there's nothing else really in here to hold my attention you know it's it's in there it's a nice fresh warm summertime fragrance um kind of lacking that fruity aspect it's more about green it's more about the woodiness and the leaves and and the branches and and maybe the skin of the the fig than it is about the actual fruit which i'm okay with but other than that it's lacking a lot of depth it's lacking um, clarity and after a couple hours it just becomes nothing you know not a whole lot it doesn't leave me a whole lot to think about <laughs> you know it kind of dries down to this very generic mentholated fresh kool-aid which is not something that I expect from a, a a grand master fine French perfumer it's all very disappointed if I'm honest so this is kind of the route that Dior's taken and you know I've noticed something very specific and I've the, the sales assistant that I deal with has mentioned something very specific that has stuck out in my mind and I don't I don't think I can forget this so when I go into the high-end department store it's all Asian sales assistants and they're speaking a language that I do not understand it's not English and I'm not making this about race I, I'm just making it what I have perceived to be my truth and most of the clientele are Asian so the sales assistant said to me the Dior La Collection Prive weren't really selling I had nothing to sell my Asian clientele until thank God Le Col Noir had come out because that's a very I want to call it almost boring fragrance it's it's somewhat a fresh springtime rose and you know he couldn't sell his clientele those big bold leather ouds oud Fahan, ombre nui it's just not something that you know is marketed towards them <laughs> and so my point being is the whole line has kind of headed in that direction of le col noir is just being these somewhat fresh fruity sweet generic boring perfumes and you know they all kind of smell nice they're they're all pleasant but they're just not what you would expect from Christian Dior you know if you want it I, I think what they should have done is made a whole new separate range like Guerlain has done with Aqua Allegoria and market it to the Asian customers you know take a line make them all fresh fruity floral whatever adjective you want to add and and drop the price because these are not worth the the Dior asking prices that's definitely 
for sure because you can find things out there much 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 better crafted and much better um, conceptually than what we're offered here so to be honest I feel like uh, and I know it's not fully Francois Demachet's fault he's taken orders from Louis Vuitton mode Hennessy but they've completely shit the bed here and you know they've lost focus on what an exclusive line is supposed to be and they've gone and they've, they've they're, they're now creating perfumes for the purpose of not to be creative but to capture a certain a certain market in the globe which you know kind of defies the whole purpose of this exclusive stuff it's all rather it's all rather mundane going back to Balade Sauvage you know as I was wearing it, I was thought it's a nice fragrance you know it's it's, it's semi interesting I can I can see myself wearing this in the spring in the summer because I don't have you know those types of fragrances fresh fragrances in my in my wardrobe but I almost find Balade Sauvage to be a metaphor for what Christian Dior has become gone from very bold La Collection Prive to just very uh, lackluster Maison Christian Dior because that's how Blood Sauvage starts starts off interesting it's got a really nice I love that saltiness of the fragrance that's what really captures my imagination is the saltiness of this and it's got pastel colors I see light greens and turquoises from the sea where figs grow um, you know, maybe some blues from the water, the the Adriatic or Mediterranean or wherever, you know, has inspired Francois Demachet to create this. And a little bit of green from, from the figgy leaves and trees and, 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 and the actual fruit. But after that, it's just like, it turns into nothing, like literally nothing. The fragrance falls apart within three or four hours and that's what's happened to the Dior private line. It just completely fell apart. So Balade Sauvage to me is a metaphor for, you know, the crap that's going on over at Christian Dior. And it's also disappointing. Okay, Dior Amour wore this. And I thought this is, you know, one of the better releases. I like this. It's all powdery iris, which I like. I like powdery iris, but not everybody else is going to. A little bit fruity. I pick up some fruits. Um, but again, it's all very pastel -y. Kind of reminds me of what Chanel is doing. A lot of these are actually quite pastel -y. But, um, you know, I picture... I picture cosmetics. I picture lipstick. Almost like collagen-filled lips. They've really accentuated the iris and, and the waxy cosmetics. So I like this, but this is more pretty and it's more it's it's more beautiful than it is bold, which I'm okay with. You know, not everything needs to be bold in the collection, but again, this isn't going to, you know, fill the excitement for, for people of a la collection prive or 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 enthusiasts that used to you know, get excited every time there'd be a new release. So, but I like it. I like Dior more for what it is. Again, I don't think it is a Dior private line worthy fragrance, but for what it is, I like it. And here was a huge surprise for me, Bois d'Argent. And I want to say, if you're one of those people that leave reviews on Fragrantica and all you talk about is how a fragrance doesn't last or it lasts five minutes and then it's dead please stop reviewing fragrances because those are the most um horrible reviews ever fragrance isn't all about projection longevity and 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 being heard and about being obnoxiously loud this is the new uh, maison christian dior um, release of bois d'argent and you can usually tell the difference between on the cap. So when you open the open the open the bottle, the cap's got the new CD logo where they're actually connected. The C and the D are connected. On the old bottles, they were separated by a, a very small space. 
And also on your receipt, the only way I was able to tell um, is on the, in the sales bill, it'll say La Collection Prive or Maison Christian Dior. So when I got my Le Col Noir, it said La Collection Prive on the, on the sales bill. And I was quite surprised, but but anyway, this is, my bottle is um, Maison Christian Dior, so the newer bottles, and I can say, for me, it was all day performance. You know, almost with every single breath I took for 10 hours, I was able to enjoy this perfume, and I was very pleasantly surprised, so don't always believe, you know, what you're reading on Fragrantica and those reviews, because a lot of them are annoying, and these people should not be reviewing fragrances. But to me, this is absolutely gorgeous and a delight and a surprise. And I've known Bois de Giant for years, but I've never, for whatever reason, I've never sat down to actually wear it. I have had samples and I've had the, the 7.5 mil minis, you know, and I've tried it dozens and dozens of times. Every time I've gone to the counter, I would try it, but I've never really worn it. And even the day that I tried, you know, I did wear it, I was like, I was kind of like, hmm. I forced myself to wear it, and I'm not really sure why, but when I did, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is, you know, what perfumer is. This Bois d'Argent is got a lot of depth to it. It's just got filter behind filter behind filter, and you'd have to remove a lot of filters of depth before you actually get to zero. I get... Um, Okay, so it's definitely powdery, it's irisy. I get, you know, a honey note in here that's very sticky and resiny. I get some frankincense in the base. It's not a heavy frankincense and on uh, on the notes pyramid for the old La Collection Prive, it listed it listed frankincense and another spice. So I think it was cypress, and I was like, there's no way. Like, when I spray this on, there's I don't get any cypress. You know, it's it's I can't even foresee it in the future coming out at all. But, you know, once this dries down, and I, I kind of, like, give, give my shirt a pull like this, I can tell there's something herbal, there's something dry and smoky, and that's got to be a combination of cypress and frankincense coming out in the dry powdery base. So, for me, this... I was, you know, instantly in love. This was love at first wearing for me. And I can't believe I've taken so many years to discover Bois d'Argent. But a, a beautiful surprise. I would put this, you know, in my top 25 perfumes of all time. Just on that single wearing alone. Okay, so what else did I wear? What else did I wear? I've got here. Belle de Jour. So it's a very floral composition. And they list rose. Rose in the notes, which I get. But to me, I think, you know, once once the perfume settles on skin, it's more about white florals, specifically jasmine and pear and vanilla. And it all kind of makes for a nice, sweet, dessert composition that can get a little bit powdery but I, I like this but again I don't I don't find it deep I don't find it has the depth of the old La Collection Prive but it's still a very nice floral perfume that most guys probably won't enjoy It's got a beautiful vanilla note. I think the vanilla really sticks out in, um, in this for me. It, it just smells, you know, it's, it's very edible without being overly sweet though. Like I can definitely see the whole um, pastry or dessert or whatever it is. And it's also very pastel-y and, and, and powdery. You can see they've put a lot of colors in these perfumes and they do have, you know, the pastel colors to them but they've also got that pastel scent profile in them as well 
Okay, lastly, I've got one more here, and this is New Look 1947. Again, which I like, but is not of the standard we've come to know Christian Dior for. So this is, again, it's not very unique. I've This has been done before. Guerlain has done this with Julius Tuberus. Hermes has done this with Cedar, Cedre Sambach. I also believe Diptyque has done something very similar to this with one of their incense, the Encense releases. But this is powdery tuberose, slightly pissy and equally woody. Could be some incense in here as well. But it's not overly, it's not as floral as I thought it would be for, you know, a white floral tuberose based fragrance. I do like this, but again, it's not that, it's not that special. It's not that unique. It's not, you know, it's not what we know Christian Dior for. It's not what we know, you know, it's not what we want Christian Dior to be producing. So, you know, they're all somewhat nice. None of them are shit. None of them are, you know, none of them smell horrible, but none of them really stand out and grab you by the throat like they used to. And to me, it's it's pretty much the downfall and it's pretty much what we're seeing, not just with Christian Dior, but with a lot of other brands. You know, Diptyque could be another brand that I can say is kind of going going downhill with the last three releases. And uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's waiting for us, you know, in the next couple of years, but the picture is getting clearer um, since the release, you know, from Feb Delicios and, and Le Col Noir and Sauvage, I was kind of confused, but you know, a few years later now, the picture is much clearer and I can, definitely see now what they were intending to do but there you go there's five more christian dior maison dior or like la, la collection prive for you let me know what you guys think let me know what you think of the collection let me know if you have any questions or comments or concerns or let me know what you were wearing for the month anyway thanks for watching i appreciate it and we will see you all again soon bye for now